Hello, everyone, and welcome back to This Week in Guns, and we have a big week for you this time. It is brought to you by Patriot Patch Company, VZ Grips, and Primary Arms. This show is going to offer you commentary on all of the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm here with my standard issue GI co-host, Sean Heron. Yes, Sean Heron. someone call me Millspec. Uh, yeah, that's Millspec. Yeah, Othias is commercial. And I'm... <laughs> Yeah, Sean is made to the lowest bid. Yes, I am made to the lowest standard yeah. by the lowest bidder. And so the commercial spec would mean that that is made to the reject standard of the lowest bidder. Yes, all of these things are all true. <laughs> so that's wonderful. And I'm so glad to be back. We have uh, exciting things to talk about. Yeah, and no, and I'm sure you guys can understand for the past like 10 or so days, I've been a little busy um, with all the stuff that's been happening there's been a lot of legal dude doob- doobery doos that needed to happen but uh you know it this is probably i don't know if i'm going to say I, I hope it'll be the most eventful week in guns but it's it's up there it's definitely up there in terms of national history yeah uh, I, sure. i've seen a ton of letters signed with your autograph yes <laughs> sent to people <laughs> the the best part is i i'm like yep matt wrote that yeah, <laughs> the people have said that they're like, I read this letter and it was a little too irreverent, so I scrolled to the bottom and there was your squiggle. Oh yeah, D- there was one that I was reading uh, on Reddit, and literally as I was reading it, I was like, uh, "Did Matt write?" This? And yep, <laughs> confirmed. Was that the one where I remind New York that they are not the nation's capital? Uh, no, it was. A, oh. I, I don't even remember which one it was, but it was like as I was reading it, I heard it in your voice, and. <laughs> Yeah, and it was you. Well, thank you. That's sweet, and it makes me feel really appreciated. It's wonderful. Uh, so, what were you, were you going to say something? I, I said my body's ready. Your body is prepped. Yes. So now that your body's all prepped here, hold on, let me get mine ready. Hold on. Yes. Get it ready. He's limbering yep. up, guys. He's oh, stretching. Wow. Stretching. Remember that these shoulder. ones they taught you to do in school? Didn't yep. do anything? Yeah. Stretching that right shoulder. Yep. Ooh. Ooh, all popping right. the back. Yep. All right. Did that come through? Uh, I heard it, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't loud, but I did hear it. Okay. <laughs> so, of course, what's the first thing we're going to talk about, boys? Uh, Diana Ross. Diana Ross. It's exactly right. This is exactly the first thing we're going to talk about. And this is her new song. And it is, you know, it's all about the New York. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, Inc. at all. V. Bruin, Super Nintendo of New York State Police at all. Diana Ross, Ross' new song to the yes. United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. And it's by Diana Ross and the yep. Supremes. And the Supremes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure we tied that joke in. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, this is huge. Obviously, we're talking about the Bruin decision. You guys have heard all about it, I'm sure, by the time you're, you're listening to this. Uh, I did a live reading when the decision came out. It's pretty good. I mean... People keep like bringing up Heller and they're like saying, well, this is the best since Heller. It's like, well, Heller was like a bad opinion because there was no standard. This is actually a pretty decent opinion with a pretty decent, fairly clear standard for how you evaluate cases going forward. Of course. Uh, When you say when you say there was no standard to Heller, like what does that mean to the layman? So. There's there's two major parts of a of a decision that sets precedent like this of a Supreme Court decision. One, there's the actual outcome of the case, which is who wins or loses. Mm-hmm. And in this case, New York lost on the Sullivan Law, which is you know basically you can't have a concealed carry permit unless you know you're a super special person or you right. live in like a county that's special. Mm-hmm. Um, two is the standard, the goalpost that the court used to come to that result. Right. Whereas in Heller, the standard, what like it was just a penumbral decision. There was just a lot of discussion about what is the core of the right? What is it like? Was this something that you could really square with how things were understood at the founding? Oh, well, not really. Um, and that was that didn't give clear, okay, courts, right? Going forward, lower courts, you little tiny courts, here's what you do. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. Step three, do this. Right. So, they kind of just kept being little noodles and and letting everything go by. Mm-hmm. And this court said, uh, the court here in Bruin said very clearly, 
all right, you guys came up with this two-step approach. That's one step too many. Here's the approach. Does it implicate the right to keep and bear arms? It's an unqualified command. Does it implicate the right to keep and bear arms? If yes, the only way the government can sustain that law is if that type of law is similar to one, is analogous to a law that was accepted and now in terms of the federal government around the time of the Revolutionary War and in terms of state governments because the Second Amendment is actually applied through the 14th Amendment against the states around the time of the Civil War. So that's the question. It's no longer just, oh, but is it a war that we will we like, will we very much? No, it's, okay, it's a gun law? Cool. Analogize it to something that was accepted around the time of the founding or the ratification of the 14th Amendment. Is that the text, history, and tradition portion? So it's the text of the Constitution as informed by the history of the uh, United States. And That's it's deeply rooted. So they can't be like, and previously cases were saying, well, but so the National Firearms Act is from 1934. And so that's, it's a long time. Uh, <laughs> but this, and, and actually I've seen a lot of lawyers after this case came out, were saying, oh, well, you couldn't get to, you couldn't ever attack the National Firearms Act under the standard, right? Because, it's, you know, they're dangerous and usual weapons and, and well, they've been around for a long time. That's exactly the opposite of what this says. And it specifically says the decision. You know, these are the relevant time periods where evidence is actually conducive. And it's like, you can't bring up laws that are from England in the 1200s. That's not very relevant, right? Because they were trying to rely on the statute of Northampton, which was a situation where a king was very, very scared <laughs> because he was you know, going to get killed a lot. Um, it has to be in that time period around when the language was enacted or incorporated against the states. Uh, and also, this is what people have to understand. People keep saying, oh, well, dangerous and unusual weapons aren't protected. Dangerous and unusual weapons aren't protected. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. They talk about dangerous and unusual weapons as an example, an illustrious example, as to something that might possibly pass constitutional muster. Mm -hmm. And so the example that they gave there was founding era statutes that forbid the carrying of dangerous and unusual weapons in such a way as would cause chaos, mm -hmm. right? And so that's very different from, okay, it's presumptively constitutional to ban anything unusual. Right. Well, no, that's not it. That's not it. So okay. still, even if it's a restriction on what you and your, your, you know, your brain might think is a dangerous and unusual weapon, it still has to be justified by analogous historical laws. And they ain't none. And they ain't none. So shut I up. Mean, there might be some stuff like with regard to public nuisance restrictions on like, you know, like noxious gases, right? Like, I don't expect that they're going to, you know, say that you have a constitutional right to deploy a sarin gas shell in your neighborhood, right? Uh, I, I feel like that there might be a legal basis to restrict that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, why would you do it in your own neighborhood? That's just silly. Yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. Uh, but with respect to shoulder fired firearms i don't think if you apply this standard faithfully right and that's a big if mm -hmm. if you apply it faithfully that you can justify pretty much any restrictions on the peaceable you know ordinary person possessing these firearms what were the gotchas that you the or actually i i don't know where you were going I, i'm sure you had like a whole plan that i've already derailed but no uh, what 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 were the things in this that made it such a good decision? Was it the text history tradition stuff? Like what what just made this baller? Because when I texted you and I was like, "Hey, what do you think of this?" You said it's aight. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what are some of the things that that Matt Matty Law was like? Yeah, that's dope. So it was just the clarity. So here I just pulled up, and you get, sorry, you guys could hear my IBM keyboard. Um, it was the clarity here. It was eliminating a lot of the little little weasel snake holes that you know had developed by the lower courts trying to narrow the scope of the Second Amendment. So, uh, like here on on page fifteen, when he says very clearly, we reiterate that the standard for applying the Second Amendment is as follows. It's actually it's very rare for the court to just like say that, right? Yeah. When the Second Amendment's 
plain text covers an individual's conduct, the Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. So that means you don't have the burden of proving it, right? It is presumed so that it is prima facie on its face. It is constitutional. The government must then justify its regulation by demonstrating that it is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. Only then may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. So it's no longer that we need to be like, no, 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 right? Look, it's actually good. It's actually good. Every case now involving a gun restriction, it is the government's burden to prove a historical analog, right, mm -hmm. to its conduct, which is really not going to be able to do in most cases. <laughs> so... That's it, good. It, it was just the clarity here. As far as gotchas, though, that are not good, there is one instance that that the court... Uh, like rubber stamped mm -hmm. uh, and I, I didn't understand why consider for example the discussion of long-standing laws forbidding the carrying of firearms in sensitive places such as schools and government buildings although historical record yields a few 18th and 19th century sensitive places where weapons were altogether prohibitive we also are aware of no disputes regarding lawfulness of such prohibitions we therefore can assume it's settled that these locations were sensitive places where arms carrying could be prohibited consistent with the, consistent with the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of odd, right? If you had to speculate as to why that was added, would you even be able to formulate like a response to that? You know, because I assume that like things are added to these that, that I may not comprehend or understand. And they're added for a reason that I may not comprehend or understand. Was it a mistake by the court or do you think that they had a purpose behind that carve out? I don't know why they did that. Hmm. Interesting. It, 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 you know, it's oftentimes politics between the judges where maybe like you weren't going to get a signature or he was like, didn't want to join the main opinion unless you were like, but, 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 but make sure they can't carry guns into the courthouse. Yeah. Uh, okay, that that was uh, literally what I was wondering uh, if there was that kind of politicking going on uh, behind the bench. And it's funny because they quoted my friend, my friends Copel and Greenlee, who wrote deeply about the sensitive places doctrine. Uh, yeah, we therefore can assume it's settled that these locations were sensitive places where arms carrying could be prohibited, consistent with the Second Amendment. I don't really follow their reasoning. Are we already seeing the result of this clause, uh, which I know we're probably going to talk about later, but is it al already being exploited? Yes. Uh, so <laughs> they're trying to like call more stuff sensitive places. Yeah. But wasn't there specifically also a call out in the, in the decision? Yes. Yeah. That said that, like, we understand what you're going to try to do. Don't do it. Here's why. Yeah, put simply, there is no historical basis for New York to effectively declare the island of Manhattan a sensitive place simply because it is crowded and protected generally by the New York Police Department. Mm. Which makes me think there probably was that inner politicking a little more, right? They put the thing in, but then specifically said, hey, you can't do this. Right. Oh, man. There's been a lot of analysis going on about this. Um, was there any other very interesting things that, that you saw? Uh, in this that you were just like that that's awesome or no no <laughs> <laughs> i mean i thought it was like i said it, it's good because it's a clear opinion mm -hmm. but it is you know it's not like amazing they they could have gone further they right. could have uh they could have been much more clear with i think they might have like made a mistake by including that because it's a it's a circular piece of logic, mm -hmm. um, but it could be argued that it's dicta. It could be argued whatever. Um, there's, there's still a clear command that you have to demonstrate historical analogs. Yeah. Well, that, you know, so we know about the case. We know that it's really important, and we know that the narrow result 
the immediate result is that May issue's done. May issue's over. Yeah. All right. What happens? What happened immediately after, though, the decision is extremely interesting. And it's going to take, this is going to be a lot of discussion, guys. There's some good, there's some bad, but I think it's important that we talk about VZ grips before we get there. All right. Don't you think? I do. I really do think. Yeah, that's true. So this is the VZ grips. They're custom gun grips. They're nice. They got a shirt for sale. They also have a new dagger. Yeah. And you might be thinking now that my rights are being more, you know, are are, are having more attention paid to them. I'm going to need a celebratory black red dagger with a nylon sheath. You could save $15 on that. I like these daggers actually more than I thought I would. I have stabbed meat with mine now. Your meat stabber? Um, I'm a meat stabber. That's big. And it, like, I, I did a pork shoulder and, like, because I was like, uh, bone, flesh, muscle, skin, and stabbed the crap out of it. And it was actually effective. It was very, very effective. What color is yours? Uh, mine is black. This is black? Yeah. That's boring. Why didn't you get flesh. Predator Green? Did you know that they also have a special edition that's red, white, and blue? Really? Where's that? Uh, look at my screen. Oh, I'm not showing my screen. It's not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at my screen. Yeah, yeah. My screen. No. <laughs> I'm going to show you right now. Look at this. Boom. What's up? <gasps> oh, my gosh. Yeah. So they're handy uh, to keep around. Um, they actually are more effective than I thought they would be, and they're pretty cool. That's so, awesome. Yeah, gun grips, daggers pens pencils like that are not actually pens pencils uh i like vz grips they've also got uh hardware ar grip screws nice shiny ones wilson combat trigger and mlock screws and nuts everybody knows that you never got one when you need one i i literally buy them by the like 10 pack just because yeah. i always need them yeah, that's well, cool. for those of you who don't do that, like me, I don't do that. When you're buying your grips from VZ, oh, they're VZ Weapon Solutions now. Oh, but um, well, only when you click on that. It's VZ Grips, and if you click on that, they're VZ Weapon Solutions. Nice. That's, that's handy. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, handy. and of course, this is the home of, of the Hatsune Miku Special Edition Grips. You're going to have to send them <laughs> a special order email and probably, you know, pay for it, but I bet they'll do it. What is this? On clearance? Military maintenance tool? That's kind of slick. I I have one of those, actually. Uh, well, I have one that looks just like that. It's kind of slick. Military maintenance tool. Yeah. Anyway, guys, you check them out, and their code is this week 15 That's T-H-I-S-W-E-E-K-1-5. You will get a discount courtesy of me. And so be yeah. sure to mention in your order comments uh, that I sent you, and something else just write something weird do it yeah or just order you know anime grips (laughs) just demand it (laughs) they'll know (laughs) oh i know where this came from yep (laughs) (laughs) good stuff so right on okay so now let's go into the like what happened after bruin yeah and this is (laughs) i've never seen a response like this to the supreme court ruling and it, it's, uh, I'd call it, I'd use some words to describe it. I'd call it desperate, mm-hmm. flailing, mm-hmm. Uh, temper tantruming, mm-hmm. uh, and also like mentally hilarious. Mm. Yeah, so petty and just whiny. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I'm calling this, this era that we're in now the retaliation era. Because that's what... It seems everything can be, you know, that's happening with guns on a legislative level is in retaliation to the Supreme Court protecting a right. Right. So first up, we know the feds Mm -hmm. did a bad law, right? Yeah. Yeah. They got a bunch of people to vote for it. Yep. And punch them. Senate was approved the bill to curb firearms violence. Vote was 65 to 33. All senators who caucused with the Democrats voted yes. 
all nays came from Republicans. The bill goes to the House. Right. It got passed. Uh, 15 Republican senators uh, approved of it. Or Tragic. passed. And this is, and remember, this final vote ha- came after the Supreme Court decision, which said, hey, any restrictions have to be based in history. And they're like, oh, so you, we make it way harder for people under 21 to buy a gun, right? Okay. Right. no (laughs) the history of the country is actually you know often characterized as children shouldering the likeness of a rifle from the cradle but well i mean how old were the kids that fought with washington like they were they were just children like they were like yeah like 12 like they had the the sergeants were like 12 yeah (laughs) but that's what they did uh and you know i don't know if you've covered that law but it's no, I it's haven't. a mess. It's the the bipartisan safer communities act. Yeah, it's to curb firearm violence. Oh, really? It, it, there's a lot of stuff, language about uh, getting rid of gangs and whatnot. <laughs> mm. Well, it just spends a it spends an amazing amount of money. Um, you know, like millions, and millions, and millions of dollars to go to NICS for implementing new background checks. Millions, and millions, and millions of dollars to compensate local law enforcement officers for working with the feds that's concerning um of course a grant program to make states do their own red flag laws completely eliminating um the privacy rights of people under the age of 21 uh, when it comes to you know a lot of that stuff they're getting access to records that they would never otherwise have access to it's it's really a dreadful law um and most of the changes that, that it will affect everyone on an individual level are, are particularly against people under 21. Um, Cause also if you commit juvenile crimes, you may now be permanently prohibited from owning a firearm. Yeah. That, that, that's man. So dumb. And bear in mind, there's still, and they said this was going to be a big compromise package. Right. So I kept reading through this thing like, wait, okay, where's our thing? you know mm-hmm. where's yeah. the thing yeah where's our because you know that's how a compromise works it's like you go okay i'm gonna get this but you you can have some right, right. uh it wasn't there <laughs> no i i don't see it either i'm like uh, yeah. i don't think they know what what is the, no. the meme i don't think that means what you think it means there there was nothing there were like I think they might have thought they're like you were getting money to force children to do mental health screenings. It's like is that what you wanted? Is that what we wanted? I didn't want that. Right. <laughs> uh, so state crisis intervention or support for state crisis intervention orders, like big huge pot of money yep. that they take out to make sure that they uh, keep deadly weapons out of the hands of individuals that a court has determined to be a significant danger to themselves or others and other purposes, such as mental health courts, drug courts, veterans courts, and extreme risk protection orders that have sufficient due process. Like, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, so that's that's where they're saying we're going to pay money for states to implement a red flag law, but it's got to have, and this is where I think the like compromise came in, and I know some of the little bastards that are probably responsible for this people who are allegedly pro-gun um hey heritage foundation looking at you uh (laughs) you're terrible fucking traitors uh they they go on and they're like no red flags are good as long as they respect due due process so that what do they put on here just make sure it respects due process right and the literally the last line in the paragraph sufficient due process like that the psychology behind that is is simple and obvious and don't oh, and also like and so the, and and one of the things that these like turncoat idiot republican mainstream morons um i hate the heritage foundation so much because they were like they were pushing the hell out of this uh, oh, and it's sure. actually kind of sad because it's somebody that i used to be friends with who works there now that is like their mouthpiece they're going for oh my god like Oh, well, but you need to have the opportunity for a hearing and they need to have the right to be represented, right? Mm-hmm. So they're like, yeah, no. So at the hearings, you have to have a right to be represented by a lawyer at no cost to the government. <laughs> oh, so you're still screwed, right? You're just right, like, right. you're just expensive screwed. Well, no, I mean, you're not screwed as long as you're rich. Right. Yeah. yeah but they- it like specifies that because that's the one little thing they could do to make these hearings less terrible is say, okay, you're going to get a lawyer to fight for you. 
right? Because this is effectively a quasi-criminal transaction. Right. But in the thing that says you have to meet these conditions to get funding, it says the lawyer must be at no cost to the government. Wow. What the heck? That's terrible. That's I didn't I didn't see that part. That's I mean, like when you get read Miranda, right? If you cannot afford a lawyer, it won't be. Yeah. For no, you. because they're still like they're still pretending that this is like a civil forfeiture. Right, but it's not. I mean, it's it not. is, but like it's not. Well, it's, I don't. I don't think it is. I, I. I think it's. I think it's a total criminal proceeding because, in what other civil actions do you? Oh, yeah. Dogs are cool. In what other other civil actions do you get to uh, lose your civil rights? Right. Potentially permanently. Crazy. I can't think of any. No, I can't either. Yeah. I mean, so this I, is, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that there's like people who say they're pro gun signing off on this crap, it's like, what is this? Is this controlled opposition? Like, it's just everyone's fake. That, see, the problem is, is that the politicians don't actually believe what they say they believe. Mm -hmm. They're all fake. It's whatever gets them the power, the money, the control that they desire, they will do. And the second, that they can get away with screwing us, the people, over. They will do so. Like they, yeah. all these politicians are some. Anyone who I just wants don't even get the like reasoning. No, like you know, I, I can at least understand when someone was like, "Oh yeah, I see what was in it for you. Like you got that big old money pot. That's cool. I, I kind of want a money pot, right?" Yeah, I, I don't know if I do that, but I'd like it, right? But with this, what's in it for them? I mm -hmm. kind of think like my theory might is these people like you know these. GOP people that are up there saying they're pro-gun and then signing off on this type of trash. Their idea of what is a firearm and what gun rights are is twisted. Yeah. Because they are Northeastern and right, even if they say they're from, you know, even if they say they're from Florida, they say they're from Texas or whatever, come on, they moved to DC and they always wanted to be there. And where did they move to the state from, you know? Right. Like they went there from the Northeast to get elected and then go right back to the Northeast. These are all coastal elitist losers to like all of these people. Firearms are like, oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah, I'm a big gun guy. Yeah. Patagonia jacket, bird <laughs> shooting. Oh, yeah. That's, that's me. We know your type. And so they're like, it's like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. We're, and I'm sure if you bring this to them, this isn't about taking the guns away, it's about making sure that the cops can do their job. Well, it's the cop's job. Taking the guns away. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah. Circular. But like you can just get them to, to sign off. It's like, don't worry. We're going to put due process protections. Yeah. Oh. If you can afford it. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, yeah, that's good. That's reasonable. That sounds like the good words that I'm supposed to. Yeah. Right? Exactly. They don't, they don't care. Farce. Yeah, yeah, they don't care. They and they like they don't understand how this affects people. They don't understand how this can be used, right, by by bad actors, by ne'er do wells, by an angry ex, right? Yeah. I've been telling everybody this is gonna be, and it's already started happening. This is going to be if if this gets implemented, you know, across the nation, it's gonna be the next form of swatting. Oh, I mean, if it, it already is. Like yeah. it's been used like that. Yep. Um, the boyfriend clause. Uh, oh my God! Domestic violence abusers are now going to be in Nick's. But wait, I thought domestic violence like went into Nick's automatically. Does it so, not? Well, yes, but now there's like a whole new system of reporting because they've expanded what is reportable, and like all this stuff about like the states having to provide juvenile records to Nick's, which is I don't even know if that is constitutional. Um. It's it's a mess. This whole thing's a mess. Uh, yeah, no, that's the big one, the boyfriend loophole. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, the Lautenberg Amendments, which were a bad law, said that people convicted of domestic violence misdemeanors couldn't have firearms. I don't think anyone should lose their rights permanently over a misdemeanor because the way misdemeanors are treated are very, like, laissez-faire. You don't even get the right to um, interview the government actors, the arresting officers, you don't, you don't get the rights to do any, um, depositions in most States when, when you have a misdemeanor. 
So it's kind of like a clown. It's a kangaroo court. Wow. And so this, but the statute was very limited when it was passed. And it was, these are the people that it protects. And it was what like made the most sense for their cause. It was like, you know, cohabitating, married, you know, like, or cohabitating domestic partners or like people who live together in a very close proximity. So where they perceive there's a danger. Mm -hmm. And this somehow became, it got twisted into, but the boyfriend loophole where if, if somebody, I don't know, because like the, the definition of what is prohibiting is so large. It's like, what if the guy that you had a one night stand with, you know, was mean and, or did something horrible. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, like they, they consider that the loophole, but guess what? You're presumably, you're not going to see that person again. Like they're not living with you they're not posing the same threat as as was contemplated by the lautenberg amendment but this is this huge loophole that had to be closed so they made up a new standard for what is a domestic partner and it's meaningless the standard is literally under this law well it depends so it's <laughs> specifically yeah no it's it depends on the length of the relationship and the nature of the relationship so that's literally it depends wow and so they're saying and they, it, it, in fact, the standard is so vague that they had to specifically say, right, in the comments on this bill, ordinary workplace fraternization is not a domestic partnership. Man, <laughs> uh, all of these politicians that voted for this. It's like, how could you, like, oh my God, how could you write a definition that's so vague that you thought you had to say right. that having a work buddy? Yeah. <laughs> might be a domestic partnership oh my god yeah the the next one does concern me clarified definition of uh federally licensed firearms dealer oh yeah no that's okay that was actually a big problem and i talked about that i did a video on this whole bill um that one's big so it was previously the definition was somebody engaged in the business of making firearms and the definition of engaged in the business was habitually with the objective of earning a living mm-hmm so this implied not only repeated conduct, but for the purpose of pro product, right? So it was a repeated course of activity for making a product profit. Mm -hmm. Now it's just the sale was for primarily a profit, basically is what it says. Right. There's no longer language of, of um, continuing or repeated conduct. So it's possible under this definition that you could take one transaction if you meant to make a profit out of it and they could say well you're dealing unlicensed you should have had a license i have no idea why they did that but yeah i mean we know why they did it they did it to screw us that's why they did it well, it, well all this does is gives the atf unbelievable latitude yep to just crack on people whenever it wants. Right. Because all they have to do is prove under the statute or under, you know, the, the wording is written. All they'd have to do is prove that you engaged in a transaction for the primary purpose of profit. And people say, oh, well, but it's profit and not enhancing a collection. It's like, yeah, good luck. Right. But how many people like out there, they buy guns and they're like, yeah, they shoot it a couple times and they're like, I don't like this. And then they sell it to a buddy or, you right. know, take, like sell or, it. To yeah. Or you you buy a Mosin for what they were worth, sixty dollars, right. and then a few years later, it's like people are paying five hundred dollars. I want that. Yeah, I'll sell it to a guy. Nope, <laughs> you're a firearms dealer. Yeah, well, get your license first. Right, That's what they're saying. And then they is, they also course, add you they, they also add language to make it more difficult to possess the license. Yes. So it's 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 a trap. Yeah. Like that's all it is. And you know that they had, you know that they must have worked with the ATF because ATF was frustrated by the definition of engaged in the business because they kept losing. Yeah. Because they'd be going after like weird edge cases where like, oh, he got the guy like he made a few for his buddies, you know, and they're like, well, that's not right. You know, you can't like that's not quite a dealer, you know? Right. Um now all they have to do is look at <laughs> is find a profit motive. Yep, and that is. Yeah. Yep, that's all this is. It's a it's a tarp. <laughs> He's got Admiral Akbar on the thing. 
Yeah, for a second, I thought that I picked one that said it's a tarp, and I got scared. <laughs> yep. So that law is a, a nightmare, man. I don't like it. I'm, I'm really concerned about that. That's my biggest concern is the um, the new definition of engaged in the business, and I think that's what everybody should be. Yeah. Most angry about. Well, um, if you're over 21, if you're under 21, you should be most angry about being treated like a subhuman. Yeah, exactly. Which that that's such a yes thing. And I can understand why they would be like, oh, you know, we need to we uh, people under 21. There's been some of these um, mass murderers that are under 21. So like this, this just closes that. But what they don't realize is the history and tradition of hunting in the United States and uh, under 21 year old kids is like doing that. Like if you don't hunt before you're 21 years old, you probably will never get into it for the rest of your life. Like these are the, the, the tradition of hunting is passed on from fathers to sons and mothers to sons and uh, fathers to daughters and mothers to daughters and fathers to brothers. And it, like it is passed on. And didn't you not hunt until recently? Yeah. Like I didn't. And I, I'm like one of the fringe cases that yeah that sought it out as an adult, but like, it just doesn't happen that often. And this screws that. Right, like the uh, fathers. I yeah, those rifles. Uh, well, hunt. I think it does more than that. I think, um, I think by restricting gun ownership until twenty one, like which has been the general course of action in a lot of jurisdictions, mm -hmm. is is incredibly pernicious. It threatens gun ownership as a whole in this yeah. country, because guess what happened? Like you know, the average person, right? Where are they at at twenty one? Yeah. They're going to be, they're going to already have been subjected to college and Absolutely. been told very repeatedly and clearly this is bad. You're not supposed to. It's all part of the greater plan, man. Like the, the, some of these things are, are smart in the way in which they're done. And yeah, it is smart in how, like, because a lot of people wouldn't think of that, the 21 stuff. They're going to wait. And of course, not everyone goes to college, right? But People who do go to college, I'm telling you, if they didn't get into guns, gun ownership before they went in, mm -hmm. it is going to drastically reduce the concentrations of people who get into it. On yeah, the outside well, end. 15 year old playing Call of Duty and talking about my mom in the in the lobby. Yeah, uh, it, totally getting into guns because of this. Like, oh man, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I really dig that. And right. then, you know, oh well, I can't get a gun. I can't own a gun. Hey, Dad, can I go shoot with you? Well, you know, son, I just, uh, you know, you know, you're under 21, so probably mm -hmm. not. And then, you know, they, the 16, 17, 18 years old, they, they play more video games, but they kind of put it out of their mind. I can't own a gun until I'm 21. I, they right. put it out of their mind. Uh, and then they, they, they move on and they, they grow up and they go get a job at McDonald's or whatever. And by the time they hit 21, like they're at a different place in their life, right? It's all about partying and, uh, well, and they're not looking for hobbies, right? They found hobbies. Yeah. They yeah. found hobbies in their in their teen years. Yeah, they're collecting Funko Pops and doing and and smoking grass. Yeah. <laughs> smoking all that cocaine and whatnot. Yeah, they're gonna smoke a cocaine leaf. Yeah, but so like by 21, like a lot of your patterns are formed and mm -hmm. this under 21 enhanced review process and like uh, penalized. Then, yeah, mandatory waiting period for absolutely no reason. Yeah, well, because uh, waiting periods already, we know they don't freaking work. We know they don't do anything <laughs> except uh, put people at risk that actually right. have a pressing need. Right. And yeah. So like this is smart from the opposite end because it messes with the history and culture and tradition. It, it, it is going to destroy the culture of arms ownership over the course of a few generations. Yeah. So like, we won't really feel this probably for 20 years. Right. But then, and, and like, that's not that long in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But then you think about this in addition to, uh, all these big tech companies really restricting the content that goes on. Oh, uh, yeah. No, and, and you're not like, you're seeing less firearms. They're just like becoming denormalized. Yes. Right? Because all of your, even if you're into guns, the Instagram accounts that you like, you have to keep finding the new accounts they make because they delete them every week. Yep. Uh, like, same with YouTube, is, Facebook, Instagram, all of these mass tech companies. Like, this is all part of a coordinated effort to destroy culture. I do actually believe that. I believe that it is a I demoralization do. plan. Yeah, I 100% do, which is why I have gone the opposite direction. And while my interest... And become in, wildly immoral. 
yeah, it was like a three out of 10 uh, at 16. Now it is a 73 out of 10 uh, <laughs> at my age. Oh, what, your interest in guns? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, like no, I'm I, trying to single-handedly uh, have enthusiasm for guns. I, so I didn't have any guns around growing up. I was raised predominantly by a single mom. And I remember when I, what struck my interest in guns. I was, and this is going to like people who don't like me are going to have a field day with this, but I was bad at sports. Um, I was not very outgoing. Uh, I was kind of just a terrible little, you know, frightful thing. And my mom was like, when I was 12 or 14, she was like, you should know how to fire a gun. I'm going to have somebody take you to learn. And she had this guy who was a um, a friend of hers. He was some cop, right? Some kind of agent, but he was a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. And he took me to the range and he showed me, and I remember it was a Glock 19. Um, he showed me everything. He's like, here's how to do it. Here's how to hold it. Here's how, you know, and I shot the target and he was just so encouraging you know, he's like, yeah, you, you got him. Now bring it up a little bit and get it like, and shoot right here. And, and I was just like, I had this, it was the first time I had done like a sporting activity where it was just like a hundred percent positive. Everything about the experience was positive. Mm -hmm. And, and so I was like, I want to do that again. Nice. And, and my mom was like, well, you're like 14. So it's like, I'm going to buy a BB gun. And I bought a BB gun and I shot stuff in the backyard. And then on my 18th birthday, because I had been gassed up about this, right? And you can maintain the gas from 14 to 18, right? Agreed, agreed. On my 18th birthday, me and my buddy, Mark, drove to uh, the shooting center, our little local shooting center, and I bought an M1 carbine. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, and it was like $300. <laughs> but that, those activities that that little course of events from 14 to 18 like changed my whole life and made me who i am yeah i've always wondered what would it be like if i couldn't have bought that m1 carbine until i had already been at ucf for a couple of years man yeah. i mean that like literally these laws are, are and and this uh everything that they're doing was literally to destroy exactly what you just said exactly that because i didn't have it from my dad or anything like that it just happened. I was like, wow, I'm good at something. I want to do this. And I got in, in four years, I got to, you know, go from first doing it to owning my own gun. Man, and what an amazing illustration and like juxtaposition of what they're trying to do and why they're trying to do it. They're yeah. Cause think of it otherwise. And to illustrate your point in my exact situation. So now I've got the BB gun, you know, I'm shooting the BB gun. I'm really getting sick of it. I'm 19. I'm 20. Mm -hmm. My my mom still doesn't have a gun. She still doesn't have any interest in that. I still don't have any guns at home. I can't afford to go and like rent one. And largely they won't rent it to you if you're under 21. So what do I do? I get into something terrible. I said, like, oh, look, a Funko Pop. I'm going to bug you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I'm going to, I'm going to sit here and program and be on chat boards and whatnot. Yeah. I'm going to make a, a sex robot and, and yeah. steal money from people. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's late and you still can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no i got too much gun brain i can't i can't learn any others <laughs> yeah i can't even talk good anymore too it's much so true gun so stuff. True. but anyway you guys get the point broadly yeah. why use many word when small word do yeah big word bad small word fast <laughs> uh, so yeah you got anything else to add about this before we go into the no the local no. response no we good okay. moving on can you hear my dog barking uh, very, very lightly in the background. Okay. It's not annoying, is it? No, it's like the bubbly of dog barks. It's just like a little, <laughs> little odor or a little hearing. Yeah, she'll stop eventually. So yeah, the local response was insane as well. So first up, we've got the US DOJ whining <laughs> about the ruling. And it's like, and for a lot of this stuff, you'll, you'll see. And I think a lot of you will, will agree with me. It's like, Hey, what's your job? Can you like do that? So here we have the DOJ statement on Supreme Court ruling in Nusurpa v. Bruin. 
Uh, we respectfully disagree with the court's conclusion that the Second Amendment forbids New York's reasonable requirement that individuals seeking to carry a concealed handgun must show that they need to do so for self-defense. The DOJ remains committed to saving innocent lives by enforcing and defending federal firearms laws, partnering with state, local, and tribal authorities, and using all legally available tools to tackle the, here it comes, here it comes, epidemic of gun violence plaguing our communities. Oh, right, 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 right. Wow. Is this, <laughs> is this a, like, I, I mean, I don't really pay attention, but does the Justice Department, does the DOJ actually come out often and, and, and comment on what the not Supreme really. does? Yeah, I didn't think so. No, <laughs> it's like, like well, not their job. <laughs> not, not, your, not under your purview, idiots. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Go. Yeah. You're supposed to be like, well, everything they do is, is bad, right? Because they're, supposed, they're tasked with enforcing federal law. But it's yeah. like, why don't you go like, Did you go get buy your more? agents to stop arming cartels and all that stuff they do. Stop like right. weirdly poisoning people in the Middle East. Go buy more stuff from Raytheon and shut up. <laughs> yeah, buy another, buy another rocket test. <laughs> uh, they love rocket tests. So... Mm. Weird. California, they were not happy. Oh yeah, yeah. I I can only imagine because they really uh, like being. Okay, mentioned. Alex. <laughs> Here, hold on one second. <laughs> yep. They really like the infringements in California. They uh, they want to infringe. They hate the people. They want to take away the rights. They honestly, if the people could just shut up and just pay mm -hmm. their taxes and like never bother. Uh, the that upper ruling class that yeah. would be the best. Why don't we? You know what would be big? I think if we all just ate corn mm -hmm. and yep. soy, maize. Yep, because the government has chosen such crops for production. Mm -hmm. Eat those. Uh, eat the bug quietly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and bug, bug and purchase. And, you know, and purchase Funko Pop. I think this is really what we need to do. And they Why make we just all do that for every single thing. Multiple costume changes. Yeah. So, like, what's the deal? Why are you why are you upset that the government's taking away one little? This is actually something that really, really tweaked me hard. I, I at one point I was at this speaking event and there was one of the victims of the Parkland shooting. Um, and she was a sweet girl. And I talked to her for a little while. I'm like, hey, you know, fellow flirty, and I just wanted to talk to you. And we talked, and she was like, I just don't understand why it's like it's just the AR 15s. Like, e even if you really like them, like, what who cares if you don't get to shoot it anymore? And I was just like, Uh, I you know I had no idea what to say because this was like you know a fifteen year old kid and obviously she had, had gone through a lot but it like you were brought here to like talk about this right like, yeah this is the level of of like a, of discourse yeah that proponents have and the thing that like broke me is is it's like sure on her I can blame it is that she's like fifteen. But where's the excuse for all these guys, <laughs> right? I, I have no idea. But uh, honestly, it's because they have this mentality of like, I don't know, they're they're all child children in their head with the inability to think beyond the current scope of what's directly in their eye line. So this is California's response. Oh. To no. Bruin. This is them amending their carry permits. Okay. Of it's course. Got to be good. Increasing in fees. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Screw the poor. Yep. You got to be 21, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot here. The, this very is very limited. Uh, very limited uh, where you can carry a firearm afterwards. And like they had this thing that uh, <laughs> they amended where in their <laughs> law they. Uh, <laughs> referred to you know prohibitions 
While the Supreme Court has made clear that the Second Amendment to the Constitution imposes some restrictions on states' ability to regulate firearms, it has recognized that the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution is not a regulatory straitjacket that... What? Did they quite... Whatever. Indeed, the Second Amendment allows states to adopt a variety of gun uh, regulations <laughs> from a concurring opinion. Uh, and when it comes to restrictions on carrying firearms in the public, they have recognized that three times states that you know may regulate sensitive places. Mm. So they're they're going into the sensitive places thing. Yep. Oh yeah, I mean you you saw it almost happen immediately in multiple in infringing states. Right. This is just look at this bill. Oh god, it's so long. That's what she yeah. said. <sighs> it's so oh, long. Uh, yeah, geez, it's still so this is basically yeah no it it's designed to make like it's like okay yeah so we're gonna have to give you a, a permit good luck <laughs> here's your minefield right it, which i mean hey of course they are they they want to they, they hate us let me ask you this the supreme court has put forth their ruling or however you phrase that what if California just said, yeah, you know what? We're not, we're not going to do that. Like the Supreme court has no enforcement division. Well, I guess, I mean, maybe it's the DOJ, but no. Yeah. Like what if they just, uh, willfully, what, what, what they call them? Conscientious objectors. What if they're just like, yeah, you know what? We're not, we're not going to do that. So this has happened a couple times in history. Not um, recent history though. Right. Not like, yeah, not like the past 20 years. Yeah. Um, but it has happened. And basically what happened is the decision kept getting appealed. And the Supreme Court would keep knocking it back down. Be, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And I believe in the one case that I, I remember I was following, they, um, all right. Was I, no, 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 it was before, but I like read through the whole history of it. Mm -hmm. And just eventually they ran out of money. Like the private people ran out of money to keep, appealing the case because it costs money every time right um so that's what happened there but there are some things like of course depending on the state that the action originates in depending on how the action originates uh, there are fee shifting provisions for when you uh, like there's no legal basis for your arguments mm -hmm. um of course if the judge disagrees with you well then they're not going to give you your fee shift like if the judge is motivated so much that they're going to ignore the supreme court they're not likely to say okay yeah no you can have attorney's fees right um there are safeguards that are supposed to protect against this type of stuff but i i wonder if they would work at all right i'm like okay so we'll say that california gavin newsom and in his infinite wisdom decides i am not going to i i will not comply because right, we say that all the time. What, what what if he says I will not comply? And then like what I mean, what could the federal government do? Like remove federal funding from X Y Z, causing more pain to the. Except this administration is never going to do any of that. Yeah, like on any of that, they're all in league together. They're supposed to be safeguards. Yeah, and they I, don't work when everyone wants to screw it. Exactly. I, I I think, I think we will see this. What do you think? I. I don't, I think that they're being, they're trying to be a little more clever right um, now, but when, when they get slapped down again, I think it'll come down to, you know what I'm, th and this is just me uh, like doing, <laughs> this the is dog just me doing, yeah, yeah, no, they're cool, but it's actually, Rose, you're the quiet one. Knock it off. She's just excited about the Bruin decision. Yeah. Here, let me just pick her up. Here, yeah. Here. Pick up Rose. The dog's full name is. I picked up Rose. The dog's full name is Rose Dewitt Bucator. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right, Rose? All right. What was I just? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what I see in my like little game brain. What they're gonna do for the carry thing because they know they're out on carry, and we're gonna talk about how they've all responded to it. They're going to write laws trying to make it a minefield, right? And those laws are, 
it's gonna it, it's it creates a it's a harder um lot to challenge because they're so multifaceted and like the infringements are are like scattered throughout the law right mm -hmm. they're not just saying you can't carry it's like okay okay no you can absolutely carry you can absolutely get carry your permit you're not allowed to carry it here or here and actually new york has gone so far as to um you know they had a special legislative session which we'll talk about to pass a turbo law mm -hmm. and they say you can't carry a gun into any private business unless they have a sign that says guns are welcome. Right? Yeah. It's like that's the opposite of the usual thing where it's like don't, don't carry it where they say no guns. Now you're going to tell me that you have to say guns are welcome? Right. What businesses are going to do that? Because guess what? That'll that'll alienate the, you know, leftoids. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, again, clever. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's terribly clever. I think that's kind of, I think that one could easily be struck down. What I think, so I, I think we'll continue to see pretend, you know, playing along until we actually get a decision smacking down an assault weapons ban. Because that's their, that's their golden goat, you know? That's their like big thing that they want so desperately bad. And if you take it away, I don't know what they'll do. Cause that's their big thing, you know? Yeah. And there's one live right now, you know, or two that were GVR'd by the Supreme court sent back to the courts of appeal to redo them. Yep. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah. I, I'm just like, I, there's no enforcement mechanism. Like they could just not comply. Mass non-compliance equals that the thing doesn't exist. Right. Well, and all the, so all the circuit court has to do. Well, it's not so much. So it's this, this is the courts that are a concern here because the courts can tell the state, okay, you have to knock it off. You have to like cancel this law. But the circuit courts, you know, just like you were saying, they're in bed with these people. Mm -hmm. They are. Uh, so it's like it goes back to the Ninth Circuit. And Ninth Circuit says, we applied the new test and you failed. Right. I need, I need. <laughs> and so. What's the enforcement mechanism there? Appealing it to the Supreme Court again. Right. And then and is the Supreme Court going to take it? No. Probably not. So, yeah, like I'm like, I, I, I am so excited about the Supreme Court uh, Bruin decision. But at the same time, I don't really think that ultimately it's going to matter. Well, but hey, no, at least we do know that May issue is dead. Um, a lot of good it does for you know, people in New York specifically, but, um, annoying. Hey, there's some States where they're just like, fine. <laughs> you yeah. So California, like concealed carry instructors and whatnot, like figure out a way to make this easy to navigate for the people that will come to you and they will come to you on Moss. Yeah. Make a mobile Moss. app. Yeah. Make it easy. Make the hard thing easy and people will pay you money. Yeah. So then, of course, New York had a big freak out. Oh, yeah. They, that's like that's right after all this stuff, they started doing like, just, they just started wilding. The attorney general of New York and the New York, the mayor of New York City went on uh, television together and they were like, we, the Supreme Court, they've attacked us and we're fighting back. That's why we sued 10 random companies who sell gun parts, <laughs> some of which are like small shops. With like a couple employees. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you gotta you gotta really get out there and, and attack those who attack you. <laughs> so <laughs> they they filed this lawsuit against all these companies, including Brownells, right? Yeah. Um, Brownell and some small shops, like a shop here in in Florida, because they sold they sold ghost guns into the state. But the cool thing is that. They're, I mean, they're legal. Is Florida obligated to obey the laws of New York? No. Oh, yeah, it's weird. You're, you're right. They're not. <laughs> yeah. There's no obligation there. Yeah, no, and it's like, and it's on the New Yorker to not order things that are illegal in New York. Yeah. Like, it's not like I, you can't simultaneously know. There's like, I think there's some something like 38,000 unique legal jurisdictions in the United States. How the heck could I possibly know each one? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, A, not obligated. 
yeah. Uh, B, they have no New York, as I understand, like they have no jurisdiction over citizens, company, private companies, private citizens, the government of Florida, right? Like, no. And so that's why, like, people who, uh, some of the, the defendants here were like, this is just political grandstanding. They're being insane. Yeah. And you know what the attorney general of New York said to that? What? We'll see you in court. <laughs> it's like that. She did that on television. It's like, one, that's so, that's like such naked, insane bullying. Yeah. And two, like, why do you think that you get to control countries, the, the, the companies completely without the state of New York? So that I did, I wrote them a letter and I was like, you know, I understand that this is hard for you to understand, but you actually don't, you're not the general attorney general or the mayor or premier or god king of the whole u.s and uh i wrote about how i understand it was probably a um a tr tr tremendous point of pride that your city was the de facto capital of the country for four years <laughs> but that was 232 years ago it's time to let go i mean washington literally got beaten and new york was taken <laughs> by the red coats so yeah. yeah and like there was a fight that they originally like a lot of people wanted new york city to remain the capital yeah uh and then they wind up giving him a little piece of new jersey in exchange for it was like some kind of deal in the bay it was a bad deal but anyway um it, it's insane it's utterly insane oh and of course they've also got their own turbo law they okay. Right after the decision comes down, the governor's like, oh, special session. I'm bringing everybody, everybody to come back here. Everybody come back here. We got to pass a law. And they pass like a, a like 80 page um, law that it was confirmed. Nobody read it. Nobody read it. Yeah. I mean, of course they didn't. Yeah. They were, they were in the Hamptons and they had to dr dr drive back. I am convening an extraordinary session of the legislature on Thursday, June 30th, to take action in response to the Supreme Court's ruling on concealed carry. We're going to do everything in our power to keep New Yorkers safe. Meanwhile, all these politicians are like, but I, I only uh, I only work uh, three days a month, and this is going to be... <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, what, are you, what are you doing? So what, what was in there? I hate it. What, anyway, what are they doing? <laughs> uh yeah what, what did they what did they actually do so it's just all these sensitive places the so <laughs> permit requirements now four references names and contact information of spouses and all adults living at home including children oh yeah list of current and former social media accounts for the last three years an in-person interview, 16 hours in-person, two hours live fire training, written test that must be passed within 80%, shooting proficiency level to be determined by the government. Uh, no carry zones. Gun-free zones include public public playgrounds and parks, homeless shelters, public transportation, anywhere license uh, for on-premise alcohol or cannabis consumption, theaters, conference centers, and banquet halls, permitted special events, protests, all of Times Square, any private property without signage saying guns are allowed. Uh, and of course, police, retired police, and security guards are exempt and carrying in a prohibited zone. So you accidentally walk your gun into Times Square? Class E felony. Jeez. Uh, well, you know, I will say that one of those things is actually backfiring on them. It's uh, trying to implement background checks for ammunition, too. Oh, God. But you know how they, they want you know, all your existing and former social media accounts and right. all that stuff? Well, it doesn't matter because their their friends over at Big Tech have been muzzling us for years. So like yeah. I, my social media is the most sanitized thing in the absolute universe. <laughs> they keep I deleting it for you. Yeah, I can't even call someone a bitch without a 30-day ban. Literally, <laughs> story. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Yeah. Um, Dumb. Extends the body armor ban to all armor instead of just soft armor. So now you can't have plates anymore. New York. Dope. Prohibits keeping a <laughs> firearm outside your immediate control when you're in a vehicle unless it's locked and out of sight in uh, 
in a fire tamper and impact resistant container. Oh, wait, wait. It says you can't have it outside your immediate control? Yeah. Oh, well, that just drive around with your gun in your hand. Just like <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's the most immediate control. Simple index. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm following the law, Ossifer. I'm Here, following the law. Exactly. <laughs> and blast gangster rap the whole time. Yeah. And it allows, specifically allows for local governments to enact additional restrictions. So it's the opposite of a supremacy bill. Ah, perfect. Oh, is that one of those Suffolk County? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that, I mentioned that here. Oh, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, Suffolk County. Uh, this is their little, little, uh, little tiny, what is he, a chief? Where? Is he? I don't even know. What happened to the little video? Oh, it's gone. Well, yeah, so the the lieutenant, whatever, of Suffolk County, New York, will openly deny anyone that applies for full carry. And he said that the court decision has no effect on them. So here, what they're doing is they're setting a precedent of non-compliance. Take notes. Yeah. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. And I, like this is on, uh, this is on Reddit. If the decision has no effect on them, then their laws have no effect on us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. <laughs> hey, did you know this is all fake? <laughs> Too easy, guys. <laughs> uh, New Jersey Governor Murphy, he held his own press conference and uh, and is put out a list of executive orders to do whatever he can to combat gun violence in response to Bruin. I love how they're talking about Bruin like it was some kind of like attack. Uh, right. Right. Where is that? Right here. In the wake of it, the tragic SCOTUS decision. Yeah. The proposals, many of which Murphy has sought for more than a year, would mandate people receive firearm training to get a gun permit in New Jersey, ban 50 caliber rifles in the state, acquiring mi acqu require micro stamping technology, require new residents coming from other states register firearm, regulate handgun ammunition, limit body armor, crack down on ghost guns, and make it easier to. Uh, sue gun manufacturers and dealers over gun crimes. Oh, oh yeah. The uh, PLCAA must not exist anymore. Well, they don't think it does. They're going to do the nuisance stuff again. Already doing it. Also, all this New Jersey stuff sounds very much like this New York stuff. Just once again, all on the same team. Well, I actually think it's kind of cool. One of the New Jersey senators um, must be a really big gun guy. Mm. Right. Because he said, this is uh, Senator Cryan. It's my uh, it's my opinion that it is actually a privilege these days. That somewhere between AK and 47, it became a privilege. And so we know what he's talking about here, right? I, I don't. Alaska and the 47th state to join no, the union? Is, oh, I don't know. I don't get it. No, he's he must be a big gun guy. Because he knows... I... about the AK-46. Uh, what right. a privilege it is to look at that prototype. <laughs> he knows a lot. I... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what so a... the AK-46 is to blame for all this. Well, no, it's he's just saying it's a privilege. The AK-46 is a privilege, and I agree. It's a great privilege to regard and hold an AK-46. <laughs> Not many people get to do it. True, true, true. That is what he meant, right? Uh, I, no, I think actually he meant that our rights don't exist. The Constitution is 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 doesn't exist. Oh, it's a ghost. Yeah, it's yeah, a go. It's a ghost document. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somewhere well, between AK and 47, it became a privilege. And you know, he he said that like this. It, you know, he looked as pompous as possible as he said it. Going back, quick, I was like, yeah, I got you. You think it's a right? <laughs> I know. He's like, got him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know a gun word. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to uh, Governor uh, Hawk Lugie, uh, did Governor you see Hawk, Hockle or whatever? Heckle? Oh, the from New uh, York. Ho Chul. Kathy yeah, Ho Chul. That yeah, that one. Yeah. What about her? There was a news conference and the reporter said, like, uh, do you have data and numbers that show that concealed carry permit holders are actually the ones committing all these crimes and so on and so forth? And she's like, I don't need the data and I don't need numbers. It's my responsibility to create common sense gun laws for the people of this great state of New York. I was like, oh, oh, so it and is. And then everyone clapped. Yeah. Every, 
actually it was her seven year old son that said that and then it <laughs> clapped. Uh, oh, but yeah wow. like they said the quiet part out loud yeah well she says that the supreme court's out of touch with what the state wants and that mm. the state legislature will be restricting places that firearms can be carried mm. last week and they did it um but it's like guess what it's not their job to care about what you want they interpret the constitution you stupid like idiot exactly well at least we we have all of our personal data like secured i think well she said that she's gonna go right up to the line but not cross it with (laughs) regards to the legality of the legislation like imagine that imagine like in any other context your governor saying i'm gonna take exactly as much of your rights as i can but i'm not gonna cross the line right like would you be like oh yeah it's good thank you that's big thanks yeah thank you well, we're going to do the same the other way. So how do you feel about that? And we're probably going to jump over that line a little bit too. Yeah. And you're going to do a little dance. In my do a funny Fortnite dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, of course, a, this one has been like, I've been getting more media inquiries about this than anything. Um, of course, there's a reload article that talked about it where I'm sure you guys heard about this. Curiously, right after. Um, the decision California just doxes all the gun hold- owners and, and carry permit holders interesting did you, you read about that I did I, I read a lot about it actually yeah, well, I even well, looked for the file but I couldn't find it I mean, I don't really need to like look at them I mean I uh, just wanted to like have it and caress it yeah so their 2022 dash firearms dashboard portal went live on monday with publicly accessible files that include identifying information for those who have concealed carry permits the leaked information includes the person's full name home address date of birth and date the permit was issued data also shows the type of permit issued indicating if the permit holder is a member of a law enforcement or a judge so that means they've also leaked the names and addresses of all their copy and judges which good but at the same time like holy moly and <clears throat> yeah, why don't you just release that part yeah did i see somewhere that they're not even supposed to have this data that there was like a lawsuit uh, like in 2003 or something so i had looked into that and i'm not 100 percent sure on it either but it looks like what happens is that they automatically share all this data. The state automatically gives all this data to um, the university, the UC Berkeley, I think. And they're supposed to like do gun violence research with it. Mm-hmm. And there's this one guy there that uh, is apparently a, like nobody likes him. And <laughs> what I've understood is that he just has like research interns doing everything. So the only theory that I've gotten from talking to people, and again, this is just the theory. Yeah, it, nothing other than it's nothing. Just ignore me. I'm, I'm I'm crazy, but it's that any one of his students could have just dumped all this. But it does look like, like that could have happened. But it, with this one, the actual government portal went out. Wow, man! You know, so. this is crazy to me because this data can and will be used by lunatics. Uh, progressive lunatics to like cause harm, whether it's some yeah, it's the same some, type of people that would like, you know, throw uh, like paint on a on a fur coat. I bet I would bet you one thousand dollars that there is a person that works at Google right now that is combing this list against the company database of Google employees in the state of California and going to literally start reporting gun owners to hr or something else like i would bet a thousand dollars right now that that is happening at these tech companies and so they're just like just so you know we've identified these potential threats oh and then yeah and then they walk up and like bump into mark johnson who has a concealed carry permit and then uh mark's like hey man what's your problem and then they go to hr he threatened me uh i know he's gonna look i got this data right here he's gonna he threatened me oh cool red flag laws hmm yeah (laughs) yeah let's don't worry we'll put him in the supervisory cage but due process, guys. That's no, thing. no. It's a civil supervisory cage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the safety cage. 
I have, uh, yeah, my middle finger is just going to like get sore mm-hmm. from all this flipping off. But yeah, New York's and like we were talking about New York's insane law, uh, gun law, when they were asking the attorney general, well, where are you going to be able to carry a gun after all this? You know what the response was? <laughs> no. Uh, you may be able to carry a gun on some streets. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just gets me. Uh, like what streets? Can I can I carry them in the bad parts of town, or <laughs> or is that also? I don't know. Not allowed. <laughs> uh, then Delaware also has a turbo bill package. Uh, let's see here. I got the little notes. Delaware turbo bill. That sounds cool. Yeah. I want a turbo bill. Oh, no, no. Carney. <laughs> Small uh, savage, dirty fingernails. Ew. Run, runs the Ferris wheel. Yeah, there's just so much going on. Um, then, of course, we know what happened in Highland Park. For some reason, the governors of New Jersey and Illinois are using the Highland Park murders to be mad about Bruin. Huh. I mean, why? That, like, why would Clarence Thomas do this? Yeah, <laughs> corn pops back. <laughs> uh, they, it's wild. It's 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 totally out of control. Or they're like, you see, that we got a big setback, and this is why we couldn't stop this, and we're gonna fight back against the Supreme Court somehow. <laughs> wow. Maybe you guys should secede. Isn't it like a no? That'd be funny. But like wasn't this dude known to law enforcement already like it's like every i mean well when you're a you know fbi agent you're generally known to law enforcement yeah for legal reasons i'm kidding yeah <laughs> definitely uh <laughs> some manchurian candidate going on yeah <laughs> not even and yeah governor phil murphy not even a parade on the 4th of July celebrating or blah, blah, blah. He's immune from our nation's gun violence epidemic. Tomorrow I will sign seven sweeping common sense gun safety bills into law. We cannot wait. It's like, dude, this happened in Highland Park. What? what tell me about Highland Park. I don't know anything about it. Oh, it's, it's just outside of Chicago. Oh, okay. So it's 25 miles north of downtown Chicago. So... You know, (laughs) they've already got, like, a lot of fairly restrictive gun laws for that area. And I think, like, the city of Highland Park is, they've come up a lot in gun control stuff. I think that they had done a lot of, uh, like, heavily restrictive laws in the city. Yeah, now that you mentioned it, I think that, yeah, actually. But so, like, this isn't something that they can point to as, like, uh, an example of why you need more, you know. Mm-hmm. Illinois, as a state, has incredibly strict gun laws, and I'm pretty sure Highland Park's been a defendant in quite a few. <laughs> I think they had like <laughs> an right assault case. weapon ban that violated preemption or something like that. Yeah, it's one of several municipalities on the north shore of the Chicago metropolitan area. When everybody knows Chicago is like a terrible hellhole yeah but as i understand like law enforcement was familiar with this dude like he was a person of interest like they they were aware that he was a maniac and doing crazy things and one more time because yeah this is why i always talk talk about community policing which is like hey if you're aware of a maniac it means you kind of follow him around like that's that's one of the things that police do or supposed to do yeah not anymore yeah, no, not anymore because they're like, we want to just be able to just sit down and like, call people, get and just arrest them when we see them. Yeah. Uh, bet money that some of them were eighty percenters. Were it's, they? Yeah, I I don't know, but you but know. yeah, because they keep saying we're gonna crack down on ghost guns. Yeah, they gotta I mean, check sure. boxes. Yeah, uh, Highland Park has an ordinance banning semi-auto rifles. Oh. So they literally banned semi-automatic rifles. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I do remember that. And you're going to use this as an example of how we need more 
gun laws. Yep. yep. Fascinating. Well, fascinating. The cool thing is that they're starting this precedent of non-compliance. So, you know, I, I learned it from watching them. From a rooftop. Oh, God. They're so mad. And you know what? He's 21. They're going to have to bump the age to 22. They better just be safe and bump it to 25. What about... What about... What's the retirement age? I honestly don't know. 67 or something? Yeah, I think so. Let's do that. Yeah. I mean, if you... <laughs> once, once you're old enough to have gone through your entire life and career and settle down, then you deserve some leisure freedom. Yeah, th so they don't mention uh, what gun. They said it was a high-powered rifle. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you what. If it was an AR-15, we would already know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? That's, yeah, no, I mean, that. I feel like I feel like we would. Yep. If it, if it was an 80% lower or uh, handgun. Yeah, ghost gun. I mean, they call things ghost guns that aren't. They oh, call things, like, they call Glocks with the serial numbers obliterated ghost guns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. It's like, no, that's a that's an old school ghost gun. <laughs> it's an apparition get. All right, but let's talk about some good, though. Thank God. So in New York, following the Bruin decision, interest in gun ownership has gone through the roof and this is something that you know a lot of us get concerned about like oh we're going to do this and then they're still like they're still going to be just dirty disgusting yankees but they're still dirty disgusting yankees but uh we've seen interest in gun ownership fly in new york there's already been a significant increase in hand license handgun license applications uh when a new york city handgun license is issued it is mandatory that the license purchase one handgun within 30 days Otherwise, it'll be ca uh, canceled. So we know that given the uptick in license applications, New Yorkers are going to be buying a lot of handguns. Good, as they should. Yeah, no, they should. It's fun to buy them. Uh, it is. It's fun to buy them. Don't buy so many that you jack up the prices for the rest of the country, okay? <laughs> I mean, we know that they're going to do that. They um, are. Another good thing. Cops are deluxe angry. Now let's see this. All right, I'm ready. Uh oh, looks like I'm using an ad blocker. Oh no. Uh oh. Law enforcement officials, Supreme Court gun ruling will make our jobs harder. Hmm. Of course, they're saying this will make it harder to get illegal crime guns off the street. Yeah, because they're not illegal anymore, just because they're being carried. Right. Well, and and that's the thing. Like, guess what, jerk. The people who go through your stupid processes to get a uh, carry license yep. are not the ones out there doing the bad things. You mm -hmm. can still go after the bad people doing the bad things because the good people are, are are not the ones that are probably doing it. And that's, but of when, course, not if, every time, right? If we open the universe of carry permits, it potentially is going to bring more guns to the city of New York, and that shit is going to concern everybody. I don't think that's true. I think they're stupid. Yeah, but basically the whole <laughs> the ruling Combs is police push for gun control. The whole moral of the story here is that cops are like, but it used to be that if I saw a gun, I, I, he'd go jail. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, well, now if you see somebody selling two cigarettes and they have a gun, you know, they won't be in jail forever. You just have to choke them out on the street uh, yeah, for just, do them, just, just regulator. Cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just regulator. Yeah. Uh, Infringe this. Normal stuff. Uh, yeah. So this is this is also interesting. The Indiana Attorney General has announced a gun owner's bill of rights. Okay. Um, kind of weird, but. Uh, I thought that was called the Second Amendment, but all right. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. He just. It, he like has a little tail of contents that has everything super clear on, you know, on all of uh, the laws in. I don't in hate this. Deanna. No, I don't hate it either. And it's, it's also, it's like, it's not terrible where he's like, there's no, there's, there's no registration. Do you know, I don't need a license to carry. And he's very clear. Um, about pretty much all of it is open carry legal in indiana yes open and concealed carrying a firearm are legal in indiana does not require an additional license um 
It's actually pretty good. Yeah, someone you know, should go through and make this for all 50 states. I would suggest the guy who does those videos about gun laws in every state. It's not a great time for me to do that with the amount of change. Um, good point. But these are, these are, this is pretty slick. Provided by any uh, attorney general, Todd. Yeah. yeah. Hey, doesn't he make those drills, Rokitas? <laughs> yeah, I love my Rokita angle grinder. Yeah. <laughs> Um, then what else? Massachusetts is working with pro gun groups to figure out how they are going to uh, get their laws in compliance with Bruin. So that's actually, you know, not something you see every day where they're openly like, okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> yeah, that's actually very, very surprising. Yep, isn't yeah, like Massachusetts gun laws suck. Yes. But it's cool that they're reaching out to the other side of the aisle until the other side of the aisle is like, yeah, they're all stupid. Stop doing it. And then they'll be like, ah, you know what? We're going to uh, we'll just figure it out on, on our own. Yeah. So they the Massachusetts state officials issued an advisor report, advisory opinion concluding that the license to carry restriction policies are unconstitutional. Um, but it doesn't really say what they're going to do. Mm. Um, that's Super. interesting. It seems Hawaii possible. is mulling over what it's going to do. And I've heard rumblings uh, that they're going to go the open carry route. Because oh. the Supreme Court basically said, you can't ban them both. You can't completely ban open and concealed carry. Right. Because, I mean, the Hawaii is one of the cases that was GBR'd by the Supreme Court, correct? Yes. Yeah. Young. Um, That's great. So you may... They may decide to go that route, which would be interesting. I don't that know. would be epic. Yeah, I don't know. I like. I feel like that might actually be a a gamer move on their side, right? If it's like, okay, you can carry a gun, but it has to be open. Oh wait, only open carry. Yeah. Oh no, that's a yeah. terrible idea. Well, right, because the Supreme Court said you ha you can't ban both because there was um there was stuff that were earlier things that banned the concealed carry. Um. um and it was at a different time when handguns were used for a very different purpose. So it wasn't given like completely that result. But one of the things they were saying is that like at the very minimum, you cannot completely ban both open and concealed carry. And so, the, you know, one thing they might decide to do is just allow open carry. And if they like had a license required to open carry a firearm, that meets the maybe current. people would just like not want to do it yeah yeah but if those people would be bitches like uh, i'm not saying it's ideal but like do it make it yeah. normalize carrying a gun and that would be a funny backfire if like they're like all right we'll show you guys fine you have you get open carry permit and then there's just like everyone's got cool guns and everyone's like that's a really cool gun you're wearing yeah thank I you very try. much you can i try it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you being so polite and 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 kind. And uh, you yeah. know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get, give you a, a five star on your social credit score. Yeah, your social. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna add a point to your social credit. Um, and finally, Governor Ho Hogan has directed Maryland to knock it off with the good and substantial reason requirement. So that is just straight up no longer required in Maryland to bring them closer to compliance. Wow. That's that is good news, Maryland too, huh? It's weird. It's almost as, as if the birthplace of freedom is like starting to get a little bit freer by the day. Dang. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're not doing this don't be happy. No one feel happiness. I don't like Maryland. Oh, I mean, all those states. I mean, <laughs> some are pretty cool, but I've actually never been to any of them, so I just don't care about them at all. They don't exist. Yeah, he's never even been to the U.S. Yeah, no, I've just been to like this part of the U.S. I've been to the South, and I've been here in Colorado, mm -hmm. and I've flown around a bit, but never up to the East Coast. Pennsylvania is the the furthest East Coast I've gone. Pennsylvania is weird. It was pretty weird. Like yeah. trying to buy alcohol, we had to drive. Like it was dumb. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Hey. But anyway, I think. What about this UPS stuff? Oh my God! Right, that's another thing. <sighs> yeah. So all of a sudden, UPS is is saying that. Uh, and it's after, so this happened right after New York does their thing where they're suing a bunch of companies that they're alleging are sending out ghost guns. 
UPS is like, we're not taking shipments from ghost gun companies. And if you do it, we might destroy your package. So they sent out notifications to pretty much all the same people who were named in the lawsuit, mm -hmm. as well as some others. And I think, you know, UPS isn't usually like a terribly activist company. I feel like it might have been that they felt that they were going to be threatened by a lawsuit from New York for like bringing the stuff in. Hmm. Could um, be. I will also say, so I, uh, I saw the Brownells post. I reposted the Brownells post. I received a text about 10 minutes later saying, hey, uh, UPS is playing ball. Would you mind taking the post down? I didn't mind. Like, I, I want what's best uh, for the people. And I think that if UPS is playing ball, like, why not? So that that's my insight. Um, but, like, I don't know. I think maybe you're right. I think maybe it was fear of a lawsuit. Right, but they were pl they're playing ball just with that company, or they're playing ball generally. That's a great question. I only have yeah. that insight into that specific one. Um, I would I would imagine only that company, yeah. right? Right, because like some of these smaller companies, uh, I mean, what are they? Maybe several thousand dollars a month in shipping right. fees to UPS, whereas some of these bigger companies are probably in hundreds of thousands of dollars in shipping fees. Right. No, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I, I think that it was for that. I think it was like, look, New York, don't sue us. Huh? You know, mm -hmm. um, but it's just weird, um, and especially. And so people were asking me, like, does this create like potential lawsuits against UPS? And I just hadn't thought about it. And, you know, I think for people who had commercial accounts before they changed this rule, maybe. Mm -hmm. And especially if people are selling things that couldn't properly be defined as ghost gun parts, like just regular old gun parts, which is what they are. Mm -hmm. you'd probably sue them for damages if they seized and destroyed your property um but i haven't seen the new rules so i don't know what they actually look like because remember they're a, they're a contract carrier yes. so if they have terms you have to comply with the terms and it's hard to define these things so i they really don't know how this is going to look I, I looked up the ups stuff this morning and it's on their website it's still the old stuff that's so like these new policies must exist, but they don't exist anywhere that like general public can see them. Or actually, I was even logged into my UPS account when I did it. So I don't know. It's dumb. Again, yeah, it, it could have just been, it could just be a smoke ploy to be like, look, New York, pff. right? Which would be good. Which would be good. Which I totally just sold out their uh, their move by being like, yeah. no, they're playing ball. Yeah, what? I I don't know. We'll see. It, it is. You know, I'm waiting to see an actual policy change. I'm waiting to see what they write down. Because if they don't and they start, like, cutting up packages, it's like, okay, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder, like, they would have to declare it, like, dangerous dangerous items or something, right? Well, no, I don't think they'd have to because, again, they're a contract carrier. They could, um... I mean, they're... Ah! <laughs> they... Yes. I feel like... It's complicated, right? Because they're also a common carrier. Yeah. So it's weird. It's just weird. Well, if they're doing this, I hope they go out of business. And yeah, I hope they... Um, I hope they do fine. I hope they turn brown like a banana, like bad, bad brown. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What what, what can brown do for you? Apparently yeah. in fringe. Okay, well, but you know what else is going on, though? Tell me. Well, hold on. I'm ready. In just a moment. That's ASMR. the sound of a Velcro patch. ASMR. Doing the thing that you like. Yeah. It is a big sale time. I'm ready. Ooh. Patriot patch has half off sale. 50% off deals triggered at checkout. Select PVC and leather patches, stickers, cleaning mats, and more. They've also got scratch and dent of uh, of different older designs. In case you missed out on something, you could get five random patches for just twenty five bucks. That's pretty cool. And then this one that I have on my mic stand is Fourth of July themed. Fourth of July. Which yeah, you gonna tell me you don't have no black cats, no Roman candles, or screaming memes? <laughs> <laughs> got that one. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Patriot Patch Company, 
patches for Patriots by Patriots. Yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff. Oh yeah, I got the Toyota. Nice. From uh Back <laughs> oh, to the yeah. Future. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's a cool company. They're nice to us. And they're and they're cool. And they send you if you join the Pat- patch of the month club, I'm a member. Yeah, you get patches. You're gonna get every what? Patches just like this. Yep, you're gonna get patches just like that. You're gonna get the original art that it was made from, and you're gonna get a sticker. Well, yeah, wholesale button now. What? Yeah, wholesale. What does that do? Peep. I don't know. I'm ready. Wholesale. I see. Oh, it. you have to have a. It's a, no. I'm not allowed in there. Oh uh, yeah, that password. password. Yeah. Is the password Patriot? <laughs> password is not Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they redid their categories too, so you can like. Oh, it's really well organized now. Excellent. But we had a yeah. World War II section. Oh. oh yeah, I see that. So patriotpatch.co. Yep. And then you use the coop code twig10. You're gonna get a discount on Do me. It. Do it. All right, boys. <sighs> it's exciting. It's right exciting. on. That was good. That was excellent stuff. Uh I'm glad that it went long because there was so much to talk about. And excellent job, man. It was good to see you. Likewise, it was good to see all of you. We will see you next time.